Welcome to Back to Biz Basics Week 5 Flourish Edition. I'm John Schwabish. Today we are going to use data on Taylor Swift to make a visualization. Now, the name of this week's project is Play With Size. I'm not sure I'm actually going to meet that goal, but I had fun creating the visualization. And so that's what we're going to do. And it's real hot out. So uh, we're just going to stay inside. We're going to make this fun visualization. Uh, it is a cruel summer out there right now. And we're just going to have some fun creating this visualization. So let's start with the data itself. So I'm going to go over here. Now here's the raw data. And what we have is a lot of data, which is really cool. So we have the name of the song, the album of the song, the release date, the track number, the URL on Spotify. Let's scroll over here a little bit. And then we've got these characteristics of each of these songs, acousticness, danceability, liveness, et cetera, et cetera. Now we go back to the dictionary and here they are, acousticness and a confidence measure from zero to one of whether the track is acoustic. One represents high confidence, the track is acoustic. Okay. The definitions here are admittedly pretty light, don't give us a ton of information, but that's what we have to work with. Now, let me show you what I created. I created a small multiples scatter plot of each of those different data elements against the popularity of each of those songs. And what you can do is you can click or hover on any of these dots and you will see in the pop-up the value of that measure the popularity, and then you can also see the picture of the album, and then you can click on it, open it up, and it will prompt you to open it in Spotify, which I won't do. So that's what I created. You can also go in here and you can toggle, or you can filter, let me turn that off. You can filter by the different albums, and the albums are all colored differently. So I had some fun with this one because there's a lot of things to sort of pull together. And what I'm going to do in this video, which I'm guessing is going to be kind of long, is I'm going to remake this visualization. And then we're going to take a pause and then I'm going to show you the thing that I have not finished yet. So at the time of this recording, I have not yet finished this visualization because the one thing I don't have here is the definition of each of these different metrics in the viz. And I want to include that but I can't do that easily in Flourish. So we'll pause to get to there. Okay, so let's get over to Flourish. We're just gonna create a basic scatter plot. So I'm gonna click the scatter plot and we're gonna open something here. Now, what I want to have is popularity on the Y axis in each of those variables along the horizontal axis. So I need a data set. Let me go back to my Excel file. This is an important part of, uh, of Flourish. I can't use this data set because it's in a wide format. Each column is set up. What I need to do is I need to put it into a long format, but I also need to have popularity continue down as a column, right? So I need to have, what I need to have, for example, is acousticness, column of acousticness, repeat all the albums, column, and then danceability. And then next to that, I need to have popularity repeated in those two columns. So there is a way to transform your data in Flourish directly. And I'm not gonna do that here because I need to do some other things to the data, but in another video, I'm sure we will, we will get to that. So what we need to do is actually do this directly in, uh, in I'm gonna do this in Excel. So what I did was I created a little uh, pivot table to pull out the popularity data, okay? And then I reshaped the data and then I just put popularity next to it. So you can see here, here's the original data, the ID, the name, the album, the date, the track number, that metric acousticness uh, that's now going down the column. So you see acousticness for a while and then you see danceability. Okay, so that's just the raw data. And then I've got the attribute, then I've got the value, then the URL, here's the popularity. So these are the two that are gonna be the important variables. Um, I also have a new attribute that I call attribute because I'm gonna convert duration from milliseconds to minutes. The milliseconds I don't think means anything. So I just converted it to minutes. And so that's in here too. I have this blend category that's, as you can see, is, is pulling some things over. I was trying to do something clever with, um, with labels that didn't work. Cover art. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in cover art. So let's go back to my albums tab. So I actually went in and found the images for each of the albums and I just put it over here. And then I'm ultimately going to, so I'm, I'm gonna bring that in with a VLOOKUP. 
I tried to get sales numbers, didn't pan out, and then I got tired and stopped looking. So <laughs> I didn't do that. And then I also uh, set colors for each of these albums because 1989, there are four versions of 1989, but I don't want to have, you know, 30 different colors here. I want to group these together. So as you can see, I have these colors sort of grouped, and then I created another lookup table over here. So what I have, we go back to the raw data. I pull in with a V lookup, I pull in the cover art URL, because I'm just going to link to that from directly in Flourish. Sales numbers, I bring them in, I'm not going to use them. And then the attribute, all I do here is I, I just did, um, uh, I use the proper formula to make it a proper name. Um, I also did another one that's just the same variable, uh, because it turns out that if you use the variable in your visualization and then use the same variable in your tooltip, in your pop-up, it can sometimes slow down. So one of the things the folks over at Flourish recommended is that you just try two different variables. So I tried that, kind of, kind of works a little better. And then color. So I wanna have a different color for each kind of grouping of albums. And so you can see here, it's just a VLOOKUP to find those albums. And so you can see I have all these numbers over here, which I will ultimately use in the viz. So let's go over to the viz. All right. So. We're gonna go over here to the data. Let's clear this sheet out. Let's go back over. I don't know why column Q has something there, probably messing around. I am just going to, I'm actually just gonna bring this in. I'm gonna bring this in. I don't think I've done it in one of these videos to just show you how to upload the data. So I'm just gonna click upload data and I'm going to go to week five pivot. I'm gonna click open and it's gonna churn, 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 churn. And what's going to be nice is it's going to give me the option to pick out the tab that I want to use. So I want to use the, the three one, which is not the best name. Like definitely be more organized in your data work than I am, I am being here. And I'm going to import all this. I'm going to overwrite uh, what it, I'm going to let it choose and I'm going to overwrite. And so, okay, I've got all my data in here. This is looking pretty good. So let's start figuring out what we want to put on the graphs. So for the X values, I want to have the attribute. So I'm going to put in column G to start, although actually I don't want column G. I want the one that I have uh, adjusted. So this is actually be column J. The Y values is going to be popularity, so that'll be column I. Uh, now the name, the name for each one, I want to use my proper name. So I'm going to use N instead of using G, right? So I want the proper name. So I just did that in Excel. Um, I'm also going to use the color. So the color here is going to be the uh, it's going to be the album. Even though I'm going to do that later, I'm going to, as you can see down here, it's already giving me some graphs. So I'm going to I'm going to change that in a little bit because um, I'm going to give it some some custom colors that I've already picked out. So we'll we'll get to that though. Um, what about the filter? Well, we need a filter here, right? I want to have each album, so I'm going to give it a, a filter. And then for the pop-ups, let's just give everything. I, I've started to get in the habit of just putting everything in the pop-ups box because then it just lets you pick when you create the pop-up, just lets you pick. So I, I kind of feel like I'm just going to use everything. So let's go over and see what we've got. Okay, so here we go. We've got everything sort of set up, but we don't have a grid. So I actually want to have a grid of charts. I want a facet here. So everything is now in this one chart. Okay, don't want that. What I want is a grid of charts. So what do I want to do? I want to break this out by my attribute. So I'm going to put in column N here. And now if we go back, now we've got different graphs for each one. Okay, so we're getting there. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start to modify this graph and this is what we wanna get to. And so this would be a good moment if you don't wanna follow along, see ya, have a good day. Uh, if you do, uh, I'm just gonna walk through each of these steps that I uh, did to create that this graph here with this data here. So that's what we're what we're gonna do here. So let's uh, let's start with the colors. So I think all these dot sizes, we're gonna have to change these axes in a little bit, but let's let's turn that off. Let's start with the colors. So the colors I want, I want them to correspond right to the sort of groupings. And so I've kind of already created this. I'm just gonna copy and paste from something I have on my other screen here. All I'm gonna do is copy and paste. So here, album one, I've just numbered it album one. I'm just going to set that, but you can see the colors aren't changing. Why? 
because I put in the color of the album, whereas I want my color to be column P, right? Because that's the, the numbering that I use. So let's go back over. All right, so this isn't really doing anything because, oops, what happened? Well, I changed the variable I used from the name of the album, column C, to this column P, which is now a number. So what I need to do here is change this to text. And I can click the little box at the top, change it to text, click apply. And now when I go back, it's gonna let me, you can see those colors have already changed a little bit. This is a little bit of a weirdness, I would say, because notice how the menu has totally changed here, but the colors, as you can see, are matching these colors. So let me, let me make that clear. When I have a number, it's easy for me to put just paste the colors in here. I can do that here. I can just go through and start changing these options to get to color, copy and paste. But I found sort of by accident that if I go back and make, if I use it as a number, paste my color codes in and then change it to a text, I don't have to go through all the menus in the dot colors menu to, to make those colors. So I know that sounded a little strange, but, but this made things a lot easier for me. So I just, I'm just gonna sort of do that piece. Okay, we'll just do a, a few things here. Let's get down to the X axis because this is a little hard to navigate right now because they all just look like straight lines. So we don't want the x-axis to match. So I'm gonna turn that off and that's gonna change a lot of things. Okay, so that changes a lot. Now I can see more of the uh, the charts here. So that's, that's a really kind of key piece is to start, is to change that x-axis. But let's go back. I'm just gonna make a few changes here. Uh, I'm gonna make the dots a lot bigger. I'll just make them 100. That'll make them bigger. As you see, there's a lot of dots, so I wanna be bigger. Um, okay, <clears throat> the grid of charts. Um, so this, I don't really love the way this looks, so I'm gonna change this to two. So you can see now we're getting closer to what we have here. I'm just gonna click back and forth just for a moment. See, we're getting closer. Okay, so that's all set. Oh, I want the titles to be centered. So I'm gonna change that, just center those titles. Lovely, that's looking good. Okay, I think we can keep so I think that, that text is about the same size. So we'll keep that text just like that. All right, a few more changes on the x-axis. Now you've seen me do this probably a million times. When it comes to the styling, I just go in here and change this to zero right away. I also don't need that x-axis uh, title. So we're just gonna turn that off and we'll just custom and then just leave it and we're, we're set there. So now we're getting into, um, we're getting into some good, good, good pieces here. Uh, let's turn off our grid lines. Just go down here. I don't think we need the, the vertical grid lines. I, I don't know if we need those. I don't think we really need those. So I'm gonna turn those off. Anything else on the x-axis? I think I'm pretty good. I think I got that pretty close. Um, okay, let's go down one more. Let's go to our y-axis. Um, we do want the y-axis to match, so we'll, we'll keep that on. Um, we don't need, we wanna change the, how this y-axis label looks. Look how I made it much smaller, because it's repeated, so I don't think I really need it. So let's change that, let's just make that, uh, we can keep that, but let's change the style here. So let's bring this down to, that's too small. So the one thing you can do is just go back and just see. So let's see, what did I, what did I use here? We go down. So I used a 0.8 and I uh, used a regular weight, which makes sense. So I'm going to make that regular weight and I use the 0.8. So there we go. So that matches. <clears throat> so that's looking good. So that's the y-axis and I think we're okay there. So let's keep going. Uh, the legend um, up here. I don't, I'm not going to use this legend. So I'm going to turn that legend off. Get rid of that. That looks good. Very good. Let's keep going. Uh, let's go to, we're gonna do pop-ups last because uh, right now it's just including everything, but that's okay because we can, we can change it. So the filter, uh, I think the filter looks pretty good. Everything's sort of filled in. Yes, I wanna have the all, let's make sure this is working. Yes, that looks nice, I like that. That's looking good, all. You could have that legend back on, I guess, if you wanna distinguish by, by album, but I think it's okay the way it is. Let's put a trend line on. Now here, you have to make, Sure, right? If I do one per discrete color, I get all these lines, which is which is pretty pretty entertaining because that because you've got some some stuff going on here. I mean, 
I think this is another weirdness of, of Flourish, to be honest. Like, <clears throat> why is this line shooting up? It should only sit in this particular graph, but okay. Uh, we don't want that anyway, so let's just do one for all colors. Um, I'm gonna make that a little bit darker, and I think I can, point one is as thin as I can make it, so I'll just leave it like that. All right, <clears throat> let's go to trend lines box. We don't need that, don't need that. Let's go to layout, let's change this. Um, font we'll use coda here just i don't know i just picked coda i don't i don't just try to do something a little bit different um so that looks good um okay let's do let's keep going header we need a title here um what did i use taylor swift songs throughout the years not a particularly very clever title but okay uh okay and then a subtitle now here's an interesting piece explore attributes you would think this would be a subtitle and if I paste that in as a subtitle, drag this down a little bit. That's pretty big, so let's style that. And that's as small as you can make it, which for me isn't small enough. I want it to be smaller. So if I get rid of, if I, if I, whoops, if I put this in the text box, the text option down here and turn the styling on that and turn the subtitle off, that looks a little bit better. I actually, I think I used a gray in the uh, the final version. So I'm gonna do that here. Let's see, yeah, that's pretty pretty standard approach. If you know my work, you know a pretty standard approach of using gray for, uh, for those sorts of things. Okay, so the last piece is, I think, I think we're pretty close here. Um, the last thing I think is to, well, we wanna add a source note. So let's do that, let's do that right now. Um, so I'm gonna call this back to Viz Basics week number five and the source URL. I'll just grab this one and put this in. And this I love. This just does it automatically, like so easy. Just love that, that's great. All right, last thing is the pop-up. This pop-up has everything. And as you can see here, I have a little more custom. So this is really cool. I really like this part. So pop-ups and panels. I'm going to customize this and show the panels. Okay, so let me bring up my code here. All right. So there's a bunch of stuff here to sort of set this up. Okay. So for the actual pop-up box, and we'll do the, the title in a second. So I want to have the attribute name. And so you can see here, attribute names proper to, that's that second variable I created equal to the proper names of the attribute. But I was running into some slowness. And so it turns out if you sort of copy and paste, you just end up, it just works a little faster. Then I want the popularity. Then I want the link to the album. And this is just uh, something I've used in, in other tutorials. Listen to the album Spotify with the name of the URL. Okay, so let's, I'm just gonna copy and paste these over here. And let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so as you can see, now I can click and it will bring up the album. So I got that. I haven't done this yet. And I've got the name of the two variables looking good. Let's go back to my code. All right, what about the image? Okay, I thought that would be kind of fun to add the image. So I found this on a Flourish tutorial. Very simple, it's just a little HTML. So it's gonna be an image, background image, and then the name of the variable. And so my variable name is cover art, and then I can set the size. And so I'm just gonna copy all of this, and I'm going to put this over here, click out, and click again, and look at that. I've got the album sitting right there. Lovely, I love it, it looks so cool. I gotta tell you, that looks cool. I mean, maybe you don't think it looks cool. I think it looks cool. What about the title? Well, what did we do here? I don't even remember. So it's the album. So we need to go over to our pop-up header. Let's open it up. And we are going to give it the album name. Oh, let's click out and see what we got. So I think over here, I might've actually put the name of the album, like album colon. I don't think I need to do that. So I'm not, I'm just gonna put the album color there. And then I actually have a background color. And as you can see here, I used a little bit of a, use a little bit of a purple. Um, I, I haven't told you about the colors yet. I'm coming to that. Um, so let's find what color I used here. And this is again, something I've mentioned in the past. I don't like this. To get this background color, I need to actually write this down because you can't copy and paste. So 3E114A. Yes, I use pen and paper with my work. Uh, I hope that's not shocking to anybody. So let's change this. 
Uh, maybe you can memorize. Oh, here's another weird thing. If you just type in 3E114A, okay, and hit tab or return, it doesn't do anything. Because without that little, without the hashtag, it just, it, it doesn't fill it in for you. So you need to do it. You need to make sure you have your hashtag in there. And now I'll click out of it. And now I've got the little purple color. Okay. So um, you're probably wondering, you probably were like, wait, 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 he skipped over the color. I totally did. Sorry. So where did these colors come from? Um, uh, several months ago, when the new Taylor Swift album came out, I made this visualization. I did similar one for, for uh, Pearl Jam. And then my daughter said, you should make one for, for Taylor Swift. So I did that. And you could click on each of these and you can go over to the, to the album. And so I got these colors by just taking those album images and just dropping them to an um, AI tool to get the main colors out. And so I just used the main colors here in this visualization. I actually, parenthetically, remade this in Flourish and actually was way easier to create in Flourish than it was in Tableau. And you can click and go over to the album as well. So one sort of prop for uh, for for um, for Flourish here. So anyway, I have those colors. And so all I did was for each album, I just put those colors in and that's where the colors came from. Okay, so now let's go back because something happened to my pop-ups. Whoops, I may have lost it. There they are. Okay, so I went, I pressed that button. Okay, we've got everything set up. I really like this chart. I really like it. I like it. I don't know if I really like it. Like, I don't think it's going to, like, make anybody, you know, super excited. Okay, but here's the thing. I don't know what acousticness means. And I thought about putting it in the tool tip, but... That got a little, tr not tricky, you just need to create a new variable to do that. But what I wanna do is just have the text right here, where my cursor is, right below the name that says what this is, but I can't do that in Flourish directly. Can't add a little text box there. So I'm gonna take a break here, and when we come back, we're going to add that annotation in the visualization itself, okay? So take a break. I put some notes about this in including the code for the pop-ups in the notes of the video, see what you think, and then come back and we'll do one more thing to this visualization. Okay, welcome back. So as I mentioned, what I wanna do is add a little bit of annotation here. Now, it's not really a glitch in Flourish that I can't do that. Um, it, Flourish can be a little bit delicate, you know, to, to make a few things that, that you, you know, might or might not want to create. But what I want to do is add this, this attribution, this annotation. So here's what I'm going to do. Export, and I'm going to add it to a Canva presentation. And I'm just going to say add to Canva. Now you need a Canva account. If you don't have a Canva account, you need to start a Canva account. But then once you have the Canva account, you can just uh, drop these in. So using a new design. Now here's something that I've been struggling with a little bit is like figuring out the right size. So I know that the width of my visualization is 600 pixels. And I'm gonna click custom size. So I know the width is 600 pixels, but it's taller than that. So I'm just gonna say 800 pixels for now and we'll see what happens. Um, I could always adjust that later. That is one of the really nice things about, about Canva. All right, so it's gonna generate that, um, that basic outline. And then um, I'm just gonna grab the, the one that I created. Now again, I haven't finished this yet. Like at the time of this recording, I have not finished this visualization. So um, I'm just gonna show you what I have in mind. So I'm gonna drag that in and I'll make it full screen. And so this is what the visualization looks in Canva right now. Now what's really nice here again, cause you can just bring this in is I can actually interact with this, right? This is, it's in, it's in Canva, but I can interact with it. I can click on it. I can use the filters, right? It, it definitely works. Okay, so what I wanna do though is I wanna add the definition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little text box, a little body text, and I'm gonna go over to week five and I'm gonna grab the definition for acoustic and I'm gonna drop this in and I'm gonna make this text smaller. Definitely want it to match kind of what I have already here for my viz, that looks a little bit too big. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. That's probably about right. And now I can sort of make that like that. Now here's something interesting I found. So I'll, if you remember, I used the Coda font for this. 
but Coda is not in here. So that's kind of interesting that Coda is in Flourish, but not in Canva that owns Flourish. So that made me sort of like scratch my head a little bit. Um, you would think, you know, they would be aligned, but you know, okay, whatever. So, you know, you just gotta shake, shake that off, I guess. Um, so we'll just pick like Arial for now. I'll, I'll figure out, you can bring in your own font. So I'll, I'll do that later. Okay. So now I go back to my little text box, duplicate, go over to danceability. Whoops. Go back over here, danceability, grab this text copy, paste. So you can see this is a little bit bigger. So now a couple things need to need to figure out what to do. I can edit the text, edit the sentence to make it shorter, obviously, or I can add some more space here between the title and the graph, which is ultimately what I'm going to have to do. So if I go back over here, um, I can figure out how to add more space, which I believe is in the header part. Um, yes, there's some more space here. Oh, that's at the very top, it's actually not in the header. I believe it's in the layout section. So I need to, oh yes, here's, here's where I can add space between the sections so I can make this bigger. And you can just kind of click and just make these bigger. Another possibility would be to make these, I'm just type in 10, see what 10 looks like. Make these much bigger. See, that didn't really do it. Maybe it's in the grid. I want to change it in the grid. Yes, that's what I want. I want margins between the grid. So if I do this, what I could do is just turn these titles off and do all the titling in Canva. So I'm sort of thinking about how I'm going to handle this because again, I haven't finished it yet. So, you know, it's, it's, a, 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 it's, it's a few things you have to sort of figure out when you're, when you're making these visualizations, but I'll post this uh, when I'm done. Uh, I'll post the final visualization so you can take a look. But as you can see, there's a lot going on here. But at the end of the day, you end up with, I think is a pretty uh, kind of cool, <laughs> it's broken here uh, because I just messed it up over there. Uh, but you can see a lot of pretty cool stuff going on in this visualization uh, once you sort of play around with it and, and learn all the ins and outs of, of, of Flourish and a Canva, of course. All right, it's time to go with this video. I hope you were able to hang with me. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you share your final visualization with me and the Back to Viz Basics team. Use the hashtag back B2VB so we can see it and make sure you post it uh, onto the Eric Balish website so we can take a look and uh, talk about it. So if you have questions, let me know. And I look forward to seeing what you can create with this data uh, from Taylor Swift. No, not from Taylor Swift. About Taylor Swift. All right. Take care. Enjoy. Have fun.